It's understandable, of course, uh, due to the coronavirus, what's going on with your China business. How do you feel like you're weathering it so far? Well, as good as we could. And uh, by the way, we've closed 20 hotels, not 200 hotels in China. So, only 20 hotels. Only 20 hotels. Uh, in China. So, uh, uh, we, we start with, I guess, but going, your, going your way, 80% of the people working in our operation in China are still at home. So many of the hotels actually are not physically closed. They're still open for business. But I guess we actually stopped booking any reservation. Right. And you have no people staying there. No, not uh, that many. So, but we do actually make use of those hotels to the benefit of the China administration, for the medics, for the experts administration. We prepare a lot of meals for the hospital. So we've been there for 47 years. So the only thing I care about is my 25,000 people in China. All right. So the problem beyond that, which is obviously the most important issue, yeah. and of course the human, uh, the human focus is, is key. Yeah. When you're looking at your job as CEO and you've been in this business for a long time, uh, what, what kind of... What kind of economic impact do you expect this year? Well, so far, China for us has been, it's actually 10% of my network, but only 3% of my total revenues. So, so far, we said it yesterday, the impact since the beginning of that virus has been 5 million euros, which is not material at the scale of our core. I don't know what's going to be the impact and because I don't know how much it's going to last. What I know is Accor has been over the last 47 years able to weather any storm in any territories because we're so well diversified in between region and countries. So we'll be there, we'll make everything possible to help solving the situation. Uh, but I'm actually preparing myself day by day. The only thing which I want is I want people to go back to work if they wanted to. Right. Well, uh, and Bloomberg Intelligence um, says that your asset light model will help you bounce back financially relatively quickly. They do expect uh, 2020 revenue and earnings to drop by 20 percent from current levels because of not just what's going on in China, but also a spread to other regions. How much is that a concern? Yeah, it is a concern, but I can't quantify yet. What we've seen over the last three weeks is you had a lot of cancellation in some part of Asia, Southeast Asia, cancellation in Singapore, but you have rebooking in Tokyo and rebooking in Seoul or rebooking in KL. So I need at least 60 to 90 days to be able to understand and quantify the spillover. Uh, what I know is because we've been there, through, we've been through that uh, some nine years ago, the capacity to rebound in this region is just enormous. That region is a good bet and very vital. And I will never bet against China. Do you still expect to hit your, you have a target, I think, of a billion um, in EBITDA by 2021? Well, we said a billion two by 2022. We don't give any target for this year until July. This is basically what we've been doing. We wait for a semester to go by. So what I said yesterday is I confirm again and again from the 600 million we had a couple years ago, we're going to be shooting and achieving the billion two by 2022. So it is a eight to 10 percent growth. I've got uh, I use our analyst uh, chart here to look at um, the way the community views Accor. You have 16 buys, I think. Um, I know. Buy, buys, go, stop. Exactly. I mean, for the most part, you can see from this chart, all, all the green is uh, a buy, the yellows are holds and the, the reds are sells. The, tr the price target, though, seems Difficult for you to get to. No. I, what's, what's holding your shares back from getting where analysts want to see it go? Oh, I think it is ending the transformation. We've been transforming this company vastly over the last six years with a lot of actually performer numbers. Now it's stopped. We've done the transformation. It's behind me. Now people are going to see simplicity, great, agile, cash flowing, self-deleveraging model. So very much comparable to my peers in America. It's really time to actually join the adventure. I've got, uh, I also have a, a comp chart, which I always tend to bring up to look at your five year performance yeah. um, compared to your peers. You're still underperforming Marriott, IHG, NH, uh, Accor is the white line here. But you're talking stock price here. Stock price here look, with reinvested look at, dividend. Look at EBDA growth, we're so much better than anybody else over so, the last five years. So, so do you expect this white line to start climbing to the level where the others I've are? Been, I've been hoping for it for the last five years. So, yes, I'm still an optimist. And one day people are going to be surprised. It's going to bounce back sharply. And that day is probably of turning around the corner because of my transformation being ended uh, in the end of 2019. You are uh, restructuring your loyalty program. It looks like you're pushing more to high-end lifestyle uh, yeah. uh, assets. Um, Sometimes it's diffi difficult for customers. How do you expect this to work out? 
Well, by giving proofs of it, I guess. Uh, if you want a loyalty program to be modern, fresh, trendy, sexy, whatever, you need to actually partner with what people want. They want three things. They want sports, they want entertainment, and they want to go into food. So we've done a big partnership with AEG in America on entertainment. We've done a partnership with IMG, also American on food festival. And we've done a big partnership with Paris Saint-Germain as the logo jersey sponsor and basically invading the sport. And when you basically have those three offers with special experiences that money cannot buy, people actually look at your program as being something they want to be a part of. In order to do this, you need to invest first. So we've been investing, and you might have seen that we've announced three days ago, an enormous partnership, global seven years with Visa, which Accor never been able to secure over the last 30 years. And Visa is only coming because Accor Live Limitless, which is a new partnership, is something that they feel is probably modern and ahead of somebody else.